Nanka, I'll advance for you. Okay. We'll okay. Get back to you. Um, I actually can't remember what the slides were because we were going to do the talking, and then I'll, I'll try to remember. So um, I picked, uh, uh, to begin with, Edward Spiken's Flatiron. There are three uh, large format biotechnics or about like that. Um, Don't buy from eight prints yeah, in the map. They're the only three big exhibition prints of this image by Spiken. And there's something of the crown jewels of the Mets collection. Uh, given by Stieglitz in 1933, maybe it was made in 1904, and the print in this case uh, in 1908. And um, I think what, it, you know, for me it's one of those um, examples where you, where everything comes together, the, the, um, the composition com coming from, you know, he's just returned from Paris, he's seen what the uh, impressions and post-impressions, and particularly he's seen Whistler's Nocturnes, um, and he's uh, used a technique which allows him to add color to the, to the picture, and so he creates um, three variations from the same negative, each unique, each feeling like a separate moment of, of twilight, um, and they fulfill what his goal was, which was to make photographs that could carry, um, that could be on the wall and carry the same, have the same um, importance and, and presence as painting. This was the cover of The Waking Dream. It's from the Gilman Collection acquired by the Met in 2005. And I chose this because it's not an obvious thing. It's not, I mean, Steichen, we know Steichen was one of the great masters. The flat irons are rare. They came from Stieglitz. They've been to the Met since 1933. This, on the other hand, is um, a portrait of an unknown sitter by a little known French photographer, Benissi Baguado. It has uh, condition problems, as you can see. It's got these sort of stains uh, to the right of the head and left of the shoulder. And yet, for me, it's one of the great pictures in the human collection, despite those things. It's, it's maybe not as obvious a, a choice, but it's the sense of mystery that one has with this you know, elegantly coiffed woman, the hair up in the chignon, the dress pulled down over her shoulder. I mean, it's sexy, it's, it's, it's mysterious. In fact, if you see the profile view of the same woman that does exist, uh, she has no chin, and sort of, you know, very unappealing, there's no mystery. There. But this, this, for me, it's because of that mystery and that sense of beauty uh, that, um, uh, that I would sort of place it in that master work category, despite the fact that it's a little known photographer and unknown sitter and has conditioned flaws. That said, the print as a whole is in pretty good condition. Let's, let's move on. Um, a photograph uh, by uh, Edmond Baco, uh, photographer in Normandy, sent um, as part of a group of photographs to Victor Hugo in exile in the Isle of Jersey in the early 1850s. Um, it's, um, that connection to Hugo is, is interesting and partly because the photograph seems to have that same that the, those deep shadows that, um, in a portrayal of the Gothic, and with these deep shadows, it's like Hugo's own drawings and his, and his writings. Um, and in this case, it's just an absolutely superb salt of paper print with um, a wonderful velvety matte surface and a kind of eggplant color and bright highlights and dark shadows. Um, and so, so everything came together, even though, again, Bacco is not as famous as Le Gray, for instance, but um, uh, uh, it just seemed to be a sort of perfect 19th century French print in its subject and in its execution and its preservation. Uh, I seem to have focused a lot on the 19th century. Um, uh, uh, Eugène Couvelier photograph um, uh, that, again, uh, where the, um, the physicality of the print, the, in this case, again, a salt of paper print with <coughs> me, um, kind of wonderful uh, lavender color to it um, and a, a haziness that, um, where, the, where the materiality of that print seemed to um, carry the meaning of the picture and, and, the, and the, uh, the sense of place that, that the picture is about. And this, I would say, the same negative as an albumin print with sort of chocolatey brown uh, dense areas and a kind of like yellow 
highlights, it wouldn't have the same presence or beauty or, or um, sort of spiritual presence that, that this one does. Let's go back. Doesn't want to stop at Watkins. Um, Carlton Watkins on the Columbia River in, in um, 1867. Um, and I think about the, the labor that was involved in making a mammoth plate negative in the 1860s. Uh, and uh, particularly when you were in a kind of wilderness area carrying the glass plates, the enormous cameras, the chemicals, the, the water that you needed and how different it is from the way we snap pictures today and assume that one of them will come out. And I think it's that it's the fact that it was so labor intensive that led someone like Watkins to be so careful in composing the picture and in waiting for the right moment when the light would just begin to ground the, the tree trunk at the left. Um, you would stand sort of that fallen tree saying it's to span the river. That you would have the full tonal range from these bright whites to, to, to dark chocolate brown. Um, and um, again, it's in a perfectly preserved print out of the University of Albums that were all in the early 1970s. And then next, um, the Thomas Aiken's picture in the collection. Actually, um, I think I brought the wrong JPEG because we actually have two Two, um, two prints of this, I think this is the smaller and better condition, but we have a larger one, which actually, it has a little more presence, but it's chipped at the edges and has scratches and things like that. And I, again, I brought it as an example of something where the mastery of the image overshadowed the flaws of the print. Um, and I think that that's something that we'll talk about in the next hour is, um, I think that when we talk about print quality, in a way we're talking about the craft of photography and that that craft has to be in the service of the art. Um, and if the art isn't there, then the craft stands there um, as a kind of hollow shell. Um, um, I think we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, I hope that's all the stuff. Yeah, thank you, Malcolm. The next group, please.